I think some of the big problem is that people aren't paying attention to the other side. Both sides aren't paying attention to the other side. The people who think the election was stolen from Trump refuse to look at the fact that we have a problem with police brutality in this country. And the people that are really, really trying to be vocal about how much problem we have with police brutality, the people that are trying to enlighten the populace about this stuff, generally don't take at all seriously the notion that the election was stolen from Trump. I mean, they're the last people that are going to, to think that, you know? Neither side's going to listen to the other side about that. So, you know, Trumpists think that the people that are on the left that are rioting, that have been rioting, are doing it just because they can and just so they can spread an anti-American sentiment. And then the activists who are trying to enlighten the public about police brutality generally look at January 6th as a bunch of Trumpists who are throwing a tantrum because their guy didn't win. Let's start by saying that 66% of Republicans actually think that the election was stolen from Trump. The biggest reason why they believe this is because, well, Trump said so. The second biggest reason is also something that Trump says. How he talks about how many people come to his rallies and how few people come to Biden's rallies. You know, never mind the fact that, you know, with Biden, he's trying to be responsible and not have a huge, you know, super spreader rally like Trump. But, you know, Trump, Trump is OK with that. But, you know, to Trumpists, it doesn't matter how many people hate Trump. They're, they, th those people don't matter. They're insignificant. They're, they're not the majority or something, right? Because, you know, power, right? It's, it's always power. It's like, you know, Trump has to show we're powerful. But, you know, to Republicans, you know, it doesn't matter how many people hate Trump. The person that has the most enthusiastic base generates the most buzz and makes the other side angry is the guy who should automatically win. Because on Revenge of the Nerds, the frat boys should have reigned supreme. You know, that's how it's supposed to work, right? Biff Tannen is supposed to be president. He'll show the rest of the world that the United States is tough and mean. You know, don't mess with us. We don't care about your environmental mumbo jumbo. Let's have some McDonald's on the house, right? Look, if I was someone who felt like the election was truly compromised, you know, I truly believe that it was stolen from Trump. I believed this in my heart. And I thought in a cult-like fashion that my guy is the only one who can prepare the country for the future, that can take our country through the future, then yeah, I would probably do a lot of crazy things in order to try to remedy that situation. Whatever it took. I don't know if I would be willing to give my life for that, but uh, I'm pretty sure I'd be willing to do a lot, you know? I would most certainly lose faith in the democratic process. And that's the biggest dangerous message being pushed by Trumpists, that we can no longer trust the democratic process. I mean, I'm not sure how much more anti-American it can get than that. To the most extreme of Trumpists, we're supposed to be okay with a president being installed rather than democratically elected. Which opinion do you think lines up with reality more? The belief that the election was stolen from Trump, usually paired with this notion that Biden is controlled by the CCP, or the notion that we have a serious problem with police brutality in this country. Now, I mean, there are people that believe both things, I'm sure. Activists want to reimagine and fundamentally change how the police function. I agree with that notion. You know, except for literal criminal culture, like, I don't know, the mob or something, right? I don't think there should be any culture in this country that feels scared when the police are around. But that's clearly not the case. There are plenty of demographics that have worries around the police. Not because they've even done anything wrong. The saddest thing about so much of the bootlicking from some, I repeat, some people on the right seems to be tied to this notion that America is chosen by God, one nation under God, and that law enforcement is doing God's work. Hence why some police departments have in God we trust on the back of their vehicles. But, you know, the moment law enforcement enforces something that goes against those beliefs, like enforcing the wearing of masks in indoor public places, 
Well, then, according to these people, those police are no longer doing God's work, and they now represent a satanic communistic threat. If they're a satanic communist threat, then do not submit. Do not give in to Satan nor communism. Because that is unfortunately the only reality some people like this can see. It's the only reality that exists to some people. So either you're with God and American exceptionalism, or you're with Satan and communism. That's how black and white, good versus bad, how ridiculously binary these kinds of people are in their thinking. And oh sure, some of those people can expand upon those beliefs and practically write novels, you know, in an attempt to rationalize those kinds of things, but I've clearly stated the base of those beliefs. And according to people like this, as long as police are doing God's work, they should be respected. And you should have no fear of the police as long as you're living a life that God wants you to live. If you're a God-fearing American and you show it and you haven't committed a crime, you have nothing to fear from the police. God has you covered. Whatever happens, just submit to the police like you would God and you're golden. And if you believe that way, then it really does feel like God has you covered. It's one of the things that can make having religious beliefs feel rewarding in a religious country. But if you're of a riffraff mentality, you don't go to church, you don't believe in a lot of social standards that were set by people doing God's work, then you should fear the police because they're not on your side. And if you're black, you have to work extra hard to make it look like you're living your life for God or you'll be given an extra hard time. You know, wear the religious trinkets like a cross, have religious bumper stickers, or have a US flag or thin blue line sticker. Visually display that you'll always submit to God and to law enforcement. We get told that only people who have a legitimate reason to fear the police should fear the police. If being black is one of those reasons, apparently the problem is black culture which needs to change to live more according to God's plan, apparently. You know, start a traditional family and go to church. That's probably one of the reasons why so many religious people are so angry when public schools teach kids that there are lifestyle alternatives to raising a traditional family. That being carefully hedonistic and antinatalistic is an alright lifestyle, it's okay. They're angry because eventually police will have to be supportive of it because the police have to be supportive of the public. Yes, religion still has quite an effect on society, but that's changing in time. And let me be clear, not everything that religion pushes is bad. I'm not trying to say everything about religion is bad, but if there's things that need to be changed, you got to point out the things that are bad. So I just thought I'd make that clear too. So anyway, thanks for watching.